fellow self-publishers. I am really excited because today we are going to be learning something completely new and that is how to take a photograph or a scanned in artwork that you've created physically and turn it into a vector. Now, this is my favorite way to do this and it's really easy and it only takes a few seconds. So what we are going to do is take our artwork and put it into Adobe Illustrator. So that's why this looks different. This is not Photoshop. This is Illustrator. And I have just created a random canvas size. So you can create your canvas or they call them artboards here at any size that you want. So your book page size would probably be best or whatever other project you are currently working on. So I am just going to go ahead and paste my artwork in here. And this is a photograph of a painting I've done. Now I'm just clicking and holding shift to size this. So I'm going to put this where I think it will look best on the page. Okay, so let's just go right in the center. And I know we have white edges, but that's fine since this isn't an actual size. So when I have this selected and I have this nice pretty blue box around here, up at this top, we're gonna see a bunch of different options. Before we click off of it and those, those options disappear. So we want to stay clicked on to it. So if you click off, don't worry, just click right back on. What we're going to go to up here is this image trace and click on this little tiny preset right here. Now this tells us how we'd like to trace it. What are we looking at? Do we want only three colors, six colors, shades of gray, sketched? But I want a high fidelity photo. So I want as much captured to this image as I possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and click that option. So this may take some time and here we go. This is a vector now of my painting. Now I know it's lost detail. This image I actually didn't get off my computer. I got off of a website that still had this up and that is why I've lost some of the details in here. But if you have a high quality photo, the higher quality photo, the better this is going to turn out. So from this point, if I don't want this brick wall behind it, I just wanted my elephant, I can go to expand and we can see these are all the little traces it has made of my artwork. So now I can go to object, ungroup. And what that has done is now all of these little tiny things they have made are their own individual entities. So if I wanted to get rid of all these brown bricks behind this, I can just delete that. Now mind you, it's not gonna be a perfect edge because this was a low quality image that it went for. But if I wanted to edit anything or get a little bit more artsy with it and I like this sort of splashed out look, there is a lot to play with around here. So this is one way to do it. Now let me show you what this looks like with a better quality photo just to show you the difference. Okay, so I just went online and got a free stock photo of an elephant. So this is a high quality image. Let's go ahead and do that again. Okay, now you can see that this one barely looks any different. But if we zoom in, this is actually a vector. So if we click on expand, which you don't have to do unless you want to touch these things, you can see all of these little tiny illustrations that they've done around the colors to fill them in to look like this photo. So... As we zoom out, we can't even really tell too much that it has been vectorized. Now that this is a vector, you can make this any size without losing any quality because it's no longer pixels, it's a vector. And what a vector is, is something that can be resized and will never lose its quality 
because it is able to continuously size itself and retain that. So that's why when you hear people talking about vectors being more preferable than pixels, that's why, because vectors don't lose that quality. But now we can use this photograph and just put it on there. But this is the difference between having a high quality photo and a low quality photo. So if you have a camera, bump up your settings on your camera, take it with the highest quality you can, that way you'll have your best shot when coming into here. So what about scanned in artworks? So let's try one of those. So this is an artwork I've done for something I can't yet talk about, but these are a bunch of Bigfoots. So the mysterious apes. So as you can see, I drew this on a piece of white paper. So it's a little bit off white as I scanned it in and I used pencil for this. So I've scanned it in with my scanner. And what I can do now is click on this again and let's look at these options. Let's go to sketched art and see what that looks like. So it has blown it out and I've lost a lot of detail. So that's not going to be right for what I'm looking for. Maybe line art. So try a few different ones to see what will work best for you. That doesn't work. Let's do a black and white logo. Still not the best. So when this is happening, then there may be something wrong with my image. So what I can do is bring this into Photoshop and really bump up the contrast because I drew really lightly, especially up here with this hand and this face up here. So I can bump up the contrast and then re-put it in here and try again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of that. So now I have it in to Photoshop. And I am going to unlock this layer and go to Filter. Camera Raw Filter. So what this is, is I can adjust basically the raw photo, so the original photo of this, and change some of these settings in here. So I am going to bring the contrast all the way up, and look how much darker that gets. Now I want some of my blacks to be a little bit more present. I want my whites to calm down a little bit. <laughs> I want, we'll put some shadows down and just kind of slide it around and see what works best. And as you notice, as this is coming out, you can see a lot more of the sporadic line work, which is what makes this particular illustration so cool for the book that it is for is this very on the fly sort of sketching. So that looks good for now. So I'm going to go, okay. So I'm just going to quickly export this as a JPEG so I can put it back into Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so now this is in my document again. So I'm just going to resize this down really quick, fit it to that artboard. And wow, that already looks so much better than that other version where it just was not um, bright enough. So that was the original. And if we just redo that, look how much darker it got. So I'm going to try this one more time. Let's try some of those options again. Sketch start. Okay, so that is a little bit better, but I'm still not completely happy with that. So I am just going to go ahead and say, let's try three colors. Because I don't want it to try and make all of these different shades of gray a different color. I want as few colors as possible. Okay, so that's not as bad. 
So let me just go ahead and just stick to that high fidelity photo for this. Okay, cool. So that was the option that kept the most of my details in here. So now what I can do is expand it and as you can see, there was a little bit of strangeness here. There's a little bit of blotchiness here. It looks like I perhaps started a shadow or just drew a line to simulate his feet there that we may not want. So we are going to ungroup these. That way we can touch all of these individual vectors and just delete that. And as you can see, we're getting a lot closer to the image. So this is some tedious work to go through all of this, but if you don't want that background, this is the fun way <laughs> to go about it. So that is an option to create this into a vector. Now, if you're not so worried about a vector and you have this sketched art and you just want to maybe color it on Photoshop, what you can do is now that we have this version here, I can actually add a layer. And what I'm going to do is put this ape layer on top and go to multiply. And then right here on this bottom layer that I've just created, I'm going to go ahead and pick a brush. We'll just stick to the basic hard round. Let me lower my opacity down a little bit. And let's get a really nice, warm color. Okay, so my image actually imported in grayscale and I want this to be red, green, blue. Okay, and I can add that layer underneath. And what I can do is start coloring my ape. So I can color him just like I would anything else. And you can do that right underneath this layer. If you guys want a more detailed process on this process here, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and we can fully color a sketch and I'd be happy to show that to you. But other than that, I hope this has helped with different options you have of traditional media becoming into digital illustration. So there's a lot of different options you have. Adobe Illustrator is great for making that quick vector. You just really got to make sure that your image that you are importing, whether that be a photograph or a skin and drawing, is the highest possible quality you can get. Otherwise, you are going to lose details, which will not necessarily work out in every situation. Sometimes it looks really cool. It's a little bit abstract. It's a little bit more artsy, but other times you really want to keep that. So this is the nicest, easiest, fastest, quickest way that I like using, and I use it quite frequently. I hope this has helped. If it does, give this video a thumbs up. I also do have a Patreon page where you can be a patron. You get a little bit of extra knowledge over there, but even more so, it helps support me being able to create weekly videos for you and bring this information to you as quick as I possibly can so I can share all of the knowledge I've gained with you and I can keep learning and bringing new things to you guys that will help you along your publishing journey. So if you guys are already a self-pub patron, thank you so much for your support. And I really hope these videos and lessons help you out. Don't forget to check out bethanystall.com slash classes where I am accumulating a bank of knowledge over there. Some of the classes are free. Some of the classes are specifically for my self-pub patrons. But if you see something over there you want to learn about, you can go ahead and join Patreon and check it out. And I really hope all of this has helped. I will see you all next time. Happy publishing.